In this video, we're going to have a look at the values DAX function in Power BI. We're going to look at what it is, how to use it, and how it differs from the distinct function. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the values DAX function in practice is pretty simple. It returns a table but the kind of table that it returns is different based on the inputs that you give it. Let's have a look first at what it says on the documentation. So this is the documentation for the values DAX function. So looking at the description here, it's saying that it returns a one column table if you give it a column or if you give it a table, it will give you the whole table. So here at the bottom, it shows you some syntax here and it gives you the parameters of what you can give it, either a table or a column. And as I mentioned to you, it returns a table, either a single column table or a full on table. So let's have a look at it using an example that I have for today. So here we are in my sample data sets. It's a subset of the Northwind data sets as usual, but we're only going to focus on two tables that I've created here. So I have two tables here. The categories table, which is a list of all the unique categories for my products and a test table. So there is a relationship between these two. And uh, if we just look at the tables themselves or the category, as I mentioned, it's just a list of all the different unique categories that we have. And then a test table here, which is basically the categories table, but it contains some data anomalies, which we're going to use to demonstrate the values and the distinct functions later on. So the one use case of the values function is to get a unique and distinct list of values in a single column table. And uh, we're going to test that out here because obviously, as you can see here in our tests table, we have a few categories that are duplicated. So we have beverages, condiments that are duplicated. And um, if we wanted to create a table that has a unique list of these categories uh, without using the categories table already and getting it from here, the easiest way or one of the ways that you can do it is through the values function. So what we're going to do is uh, from this view, we're going to create a new table from here. I'm just going to create this uh, test distinct and we're going to use the values DAX function here. So inside, as I mentioned, you can put a table or a column name. So we're going to start with just giving it a column name. So we're going to start typing and looking for the categories name in the test table. Let's close that function and let's hit enter. So here we are. So this is what it returns. It returns a table. Uh, we named it test distinct with one single column with all of the distinct values in there. Just note that the beverages are now just one instances. So it gives us a distinct list from that table and it also includes blanks. So if you have any blank values in your columns, just bear in mind that also counts as a distinct value by itself. So it does get counted. So value Values by default returns a table, not a scalar value. So if you use it by itself in a measure or in a calculated column, it will produce some errors. So you want to maybe if you want to use it to try to aggregate it using one of the aggregator functions available like min, max, average, or in this case, we're going to use the count because, you know, we might want to count the number of distinct columns or values that we have in our table, for example. So in this case, we might want to count just the number of distinct values in this list. So let's go back to our report view here and let's create a new measure just to show you how to do that. So count distinct is what we're going to name our measure. And we're going to start by writing the values. So tests category name. So that will give us a full list. Now we want to wrap it around with something like count rows which will essentially just give us a full count of all the distinct values. Just give us one value here that the measure can evaluate. So it would give us 10, which is all of the unique values, including the blank. And by the way, if your main objective is to simply just count the number of distinct values without or excluding the blanks, you can simply just use, and there is some kind of a bit more technique here, or you can add some more checks on your count rows or some filters there, but there is a built in function that you can already use called distinct counts, no blank row. So what we're going to use, I'm just going to show it to you quickly, just in case you 
just to show you how, how easy this one is. So distinct count no blank, and then we'll just feed it the category name. As you can see, we didn't even need to use the values. It simply just counts the number of non-blank distinct values in this column. The other thing that I wanted to show you is what the values return if you give it a table name instead of column name, which is what we have done here. So in our test distinct here, if we just change this into just, we just give it the table name instead of giving it a column name. What you will notice is that it just gives you a full list of that table. So speaking of, you know, distincts and counting distincts, there is a function dedicated to this distinct or counting distincts and it's, it's the distinct function basically. But how does it differ from the values that function. So here in the documentation, you will notice that there are two different and separate articles for distinct one for distinct column where you give it a column and it will give you a single column table and then as distinct where you give it a table. So it works pretty much exactly like the values function. But there are, from what I've seen, two key differences between these two functions and when you should use one or the other. So the first main difference is that if you give the values just a table, it will give you the full table. Whereas if you give table to the distinct function, it will give you a distinct list of that table. So in this example, we have test distinct and we're using the values to get the list on that table. So the test table itself and it just gives us the full table by itself without doing anything to it. So as you can see we have some duplicates here like beverages, condiments, confections. However, we might not want this in this scenario. We might just want to get a full distinct list of this whole table in this new table that we're trying to create. So in these kind of scenarios it's actually easier if you just use the distinct function instead. So what we're gonna do is just replace the values function with the distinct. And if you hit enter, as you can see, now what it does is it looks at every single row in this table and only takes the distinct values from those rows. So um, it's not based on the category name. So it actually looks at your category ID and category name. And if there are any duplicates of that combination within your list, it gets taken off and it will just give you a distinct list here. The second thing that I found that is a little bit different is how it deals with missing values in a relationship. So let's have a look at it in an example. So just to give you a quick recap on the relationship. So we have a categories table here with the categories list of distinct category names. And then we have a kind of a duplicate tests column table here with just some duplicates. And these have kind of a relationship together. And these two tables have a relationship across each other using the category ID. So that's how it knows how it's related to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two measures. We're going to create one for using distinct. So count rows distinct. And then we're going to count the category names in the categories table. And uh, we're going to create another measure here, which is counting the values and then using the values function. And theoretically, both of these, the, these counts should be the same or, or rather like how they're meant to count is the same because if we just go back to our test distinct here, so if you give it the category name here, the distinct, it will give you 10 rows. And if you change that to values, it will return the same table with 10 rows. So they shouldn't have any difference, at least if you are looking at just one table without any relationship. But in this case, because we have a relationship, it kind of works a little bit differently. So let's bring in a table here. I'm going to bring in the category name. We're going to bring in the distinct and the count, the, the values, sorry. So here you'll notice that the count is a little bit different. The count distinct gives us the right number of counts of the categories, uh, the distinct category. So you have, and we know that is the right count because if you go to the table itself, of the categories, you will see that there's only eight categories there. So that is correct. However, the values count here returns an additional blank row. So why is that? So if we look at the documentation here for the values, you'll notice here that they have mentions of a blank value that will be added. 
and that is to do with what we call the violation of referential integrity. So it sounds very fancy, but that basically means that in a relationship, if there is no matching values between the two related uh, tables, the values function will return an additional blank row to signify that there is a violation to that rule. So that means that there is no matching values. So in this case, if we look at our example, you will notice that in the test table that we've created, we have a bunch of categories here that are not matching back to the categories table. So the category ID 10, which is unknown and 11. So these two categories don't exist in this in this categories table. So instead of discounting them, the values return an additional blank row just to show that there is some mismatch there. So that in essence is the reason when you would use the value use DAX function if you want to kind of test the integrity of your relationships or maybe mismatch between two tables. This is a great way to kind of see and quickly understand that there is something that is wrong with your data. However, from my experience, I've only ever used the distinct because that always gave me the right count that I needed. So in the kind of most basic use cases in which you just want to count the distinct values, I would just stick to using distinct as the function. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know what the values and distinct DAX functions are in Power BI, how they differ from each other, and how you would use them in real life scenarios. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so let's do it better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.